Good evening. This is All India Radio. I am Naresh Mago and with me is VC Pramod with the evening news. The headlines. Prime Minister Narendra Modi to launch nationwide COVID-19 vaccination program tomorrow through video conferencing. National COVID recovery rate improves to 96.53%. Ninth round of talks held between center and pharma unions in New Delhi. Next meeting on 19th January. Third phase of Pradhan Mantri Kaushal Vikas Yojana launched in 600 districts across the country. India and Nepal discussed several areas of cooperation including connectivity, economy and security issues. And in cricket, Australia were 274 for 5 at stumps on day 1 of final test match in Brisbane. As the nation fights the COVID-19 pandemic, we begin with a message of precaution to stay safe and protected by following these three simple steps. Wear a face mask. Maintain dogas ki dori for social distancing and focus on hand and face hygiene. And now the news. Prime Minister Narendra Modi will launch the world's largest COVID-19 vaccination program tomorrow morning through video conferencing. The Pan India rollout of the COVID-19 vaccination drive will cover the entire length and breadth of the country. A total of 3,006 session sites across all states and union territories will be virtually connected during the launch. Around 100 beneficiaries will be vaccinated at each session site on the inaugural day. This vaccination program is based on the principles of priority groups to be vaccinated and healthcare workers both in government and private sectors, including ICDS workers, will receive the vaccine during this phase. Niti Aayog Member Health and the Chairman of the National Expert Group on Vaccine Administration of COVID-19, Dr. V.K. Paul, has said, that the two Made in India vaccines, Covishield and Covaxin, are safe and both have the capacity to develop an immune response system in the body. Talking exclusively to AIR News, Dr. Paul said that both the vaccines have been given emergency use authorization by the drug regulator and experts of the country and people should trust it. Dono tikay, bhoos soch vichar ke, humare desh ke experts ne or regulator ne emergency authorization ke roop me unko jari kiya hai. To hume ye jaan ke khushi honi chahiye ke humare paas do do tika apne desh me hi bane huye uplabd hain is maamari se ladne ke liye aur in dono ko emergency pradhan me liya gaya. Ye waise hi hai jaise ki bahar ke desho me Pfizer ka tika hai ya Moderna ka hai, wo bhi emergency pradhan ke andar hi kiya gaya hain. Unke bhi phase three abhi chal rahe hain. पूरे नहीं हुए हैं तो इस असाधारण सिचुएशन से जूझने के लिए महामारी को खत्म करने के लिए जो रेगुलेशन है वो अडॉप्ट की जाती है साइंस को अडॉप्ट किया गया और दुनिया भर ने किया है कि क्या फायदा जो है वो इतना बड़ा है और नुकसान है ही नहीं तो क्यों नहीं इन वैक्सीन को लागे जारी किया जाए इसी सोच से हमारे देश की संस्थाओं ने रेगुलेटर ने और एक्सपर्ट्स ने इन दोनों वैक्सीन्स को जारी किया है हमें फेथ होनी चाहिए कि ये सेफ है वैक्सीन हजारों व्यक्तियों पे लग चुके हैं हमें पता होना चाहिए कि इसकी वजह से इम्यूनोजेनेसिटी या प्रतिरक्षणात्मक जो गुण बनते हैं आपके शरीर में आपके ब्लड में वो सब अच्छी तरह से बनते हैं और ये हमारी पेंडेमिक को रोकने के लिए और अपना बचाव करने के लिए कारगर सिद्ध होंगे Dr. Paul also advised the people not to pay heed to the false information related to the vaccines. Mera janta ke liye sandesh ye hai ki aisi khabaron ko mat maniye. Sarkar ki taraf se jo suchna di ja rahi hai, jo guidance di ja rahi hai, jo samjhaya ja raha hai, usi pe hi believe kariye, usi ko hi maniye aur usi mein hi faith rakhiye. Agar aapko sanchay hota hai, to sarkari swasthya karmiyon se सरकार के जो और नुमाइंदे हैं उनसे पूछिए नहीं तो जो हमारी हेल्पलाइंस हैं वहां पे देखिए और वहां को मान के अपना मन खराब मत करिए कोई संशय मत करिए इसमें आपका भी नुकसान है और देश का भी नुकसान है समाज का भी नुकसान है द फुल इंटरव्यू कैन बी हर्ड इन आवर स्पॉटलाइट प्रोग्राम ऑन एफएम गोल्ड चैनल एट 9:15 पीएम टुनाइट in Gujarat, the state government has extended the night curfew in four major cities of the state till 31st of January. Chief Minister Vijay Rupani has announced that the night curfew from 10 p.m. to 6 a.m. in Ahmedabad, 
Vadodara, Surat and Rajkot will now continue to 31st of January. Earlier, it was extended till today. Meanwhile, the state government has agreed up for a nationwide vaccination drive starting from tomorrow. More from our Ahmedabad correspondent. Administration and Health Department of Gujarat is fully ready for launching of nationwide vaccination drive. Gujarat has already received 5,41,000 doses of COVID shield vaccine manufactured by Pune-based institute. Gujarat Chief Minister Vijay Rupani will remain present at Ahmedabad Civil Hospital during the launch of vaccine drive. 11 lakh frontline warriors, including more than 4 lakh health workers, have been identified for the first dose of vaccine during the first phase. Yogesh Pandya, Air News, Ahmedabad. Maharashtra Chief Minister Uddhav Thakre will kickstart Mumbai's vaccination campaign at 10 a.m. at the vaccination center at Bandra Kurla Complex. In the first phase of Corona Preventive Vaccine developed by Pune-based Serum Institute, mainly health workers, doctors and nurses will be vaccinated, while the other essential service personnel group, including police, cleaners, Central Reserve Police Force personnel, among others, will be vaccinated in the second phase of the drive. In the third phase, elderly persons above 50 years of age and patients with various diseases will be vaccinated. Vaccination can be done by showing official identity card. The vaccinated person will be kept under the supervision of a specialist doctor for 30 minutes. If any side effects are found after vaccination, one can call the municipality or the nearest immunization center for any help. Our Mumbai correspondent has filed this report. Brihan Mumbai Municipal Corporation Commissioner has informed that in Mumbai, over one and a half lakh health workers will be vaccinated in the first phase of vaccination beginning tomorrow. The vaccination program will be conducted at the nine vaccination centers in Mumbai. All these centers will have a total of 40 vaccination booths. A total of 4,000 people will be vaccinated at these 40 booths every day. With Jumbo COVID Center of PKC, there are eight other key centers selected for the vaccination in Mumbai. In the first phase, health workers in essential services will be vaccinated. For this, COVID app has been developed and the concern will be informed about the center and the time of vaccination via text message. Nivedita, AIR News, Mumbai. Karnataka has set up two 43 centers across the state to administer Covishield and Covaxin vaccines tomorrow. Speaking to media persons in Bengaluru today, the Health and Med Medical Education Minister Dr. K. Sudhakar informed that the Prime Minister will virtually inaugurate vaccination drive in Bengaluru Medical College tomorrow morning. He added that 8,14,500 doses of both the vaccines are available for vaccination. More from our Bengaluru correspondent. COVID Shield will be administered in 237 centers and COVAX in 6 centers in Shomoga, Hassan, Chikmangalur, Chamrajnagar and Davangere. Totally 7,17,439 health warriors will be vaccinated in the initial phase. On the first day tomorrow, the target is to vaccinate 24,300 warriors across the state. Health department frontline warriors, police and municipal corporation workers will be vaccinated first. The initial phase will be completed within a week. The health minister has said that emergency medical service will be available at the vaccination site to deal with any side effects for those who are vaccinated. He asked the public not to heed to rumors on vaccination being spread on social media. He asked them to take COVID vaccine without any fear. Sudhindra, AIR News, Bengaluru. In Sikkim, COVID-19 vaccination drive will be launched from STNM Hospital Gangtok in East Sikkim and District Hospital Gyal Singh in West Sikkim. More from our Gangtok correspondent. Sikkim has received 12,500 doses of COVID shield vaccine for healthcare workers. A total of 12,120 doses have been allocated to central and state healthcare workers and armed forces medical services. So far, 220 vaccinators have been trained for the program. Director General Com Secretary of State Health Department Dr. Pemba Chiring Bhutia speaks about preparation for the vaccination exercise. Uh, in Sikkim, we are totally prepared for this COVID vaccination. And in the first phase, uh, we have got uh, 10,367 health workers, state government, and 148 central health workers. And there are till now registered 5,527 frontline workers. And Sikkim is fully prepared for this vaccination, and we hope we'll be able to vaccinate each and every one. Sikkim Health Minister Dr. M.K. Sharma has allayed concerns related to vaccination and affirmed that the vaccines have passed stringent scientific protocols for safety and effectiveness. With Sikkim Sarkar, Pajat Sharma from Gantok for AIR.
In Assam, the stage has been set to administer COVID vaccination tomorrow. Talking to newspersons in Guwahati, Health Minister Himanta Biswa Sharma today said that 1,90,000 health workers or COVID warriors will get vaccination in the first phase. He said that there will be 65 session sites for vaccination. The health department has trained 8,651 nurses for vaccination. Mr. Sarma said that there are also 1,300 supervisors to monitor the nurses. He said that three health institutes, including Gohati Medical College and Hospital, will be connected directly during Prime Minister Narendra Modi's inaugural session. Several senior doctors of the state are to take vaccination tomorrow. In Uttar Pradesh, the state government has added more than 3,67,000 families to Ayushman Bharat Yojana in the last one month. This is a significant achievement since no member of these families ever had a golden card under the scheme and couldn't avail the health facilities being provided by the central government under the scheme meant for the poor families. More from our Lucknow correspondent. Additional Chief Secretary Amit Mohan Prasad said that the state government launched a special drive from 15 December 2020 to 14 January 2021 to bring those families under the ambit of the scheme who were not part of it. During this period, more than 10,7,000 golden cards were provided to the poor families who will now be able to avail all the facilities being provided under the Ayushman Bharat scheme. Talking about the vaccination drive, he said that all the necessary arrangements are in place for the vaccination drive to start tomorrow. In Lucknow, Postal Department will also release a special cover on vaccination on this occasion. Meanwhile, after a long gap, the number of active COVID patients in the state has come down below 10,000. Sushit Chandra Tiwari, AIR News, Lucknow. The Andaman and Nicobar Islands is all set to join the countrywide launch of COVID-19 vaccination drive tomorrow. The drive would be initiated at GB Pant Hospital in Port Blair, connected live from Delhi through video conferencing by Prime Minister Narendra Modi. The Commissioner from Health Secretary Dr. V. Kandavelu informed that in the first phase, the COVID shield will be given at two centres, including GB Pant Hospital and Ayush Hospital, to 240 health workers overall on day one. Afterwards, the vaccination drive will be carried on as per the protocols. Soon, the vaccine will be delivered to block centres in Rangat, Maya Bandar, Diglipur, Nankauri, Kar Nicobar, Hart Bay and Campbell Bay. He further added that the second dose will be given after 28 days of the first dose. Till then, all precautionary measures should be followed. India continues to leap ahead in its fight against COVID-19 with over 1 crore 1 lakh 62,000 recoveries so far. With this, the national recovery rate has further improved to 96.53%. The number of daily infections also continues to remain below 20,000, with only 15,590 cases being reported in the past 24 hours. During the same period, nearly 16,000 people have recovered from the pandemic. The gap between the recovered patients and active cases in the country has further widened, and the number of recovered patients stands at nearly 48 times the number of current active cases. The active case load in the country comprises nearly 2,13,000 people and stands at 2.02%. Out of these, nearly 60% are under home isolation and will have mild to very mild symptoms. The Health Ministry further said that this has also led to a commensurate dip in the fatality rate, which stands at 1.44%. The number of countrywide fatalities recorded in 24 hours has slipped below the 200 mark, with 191 deaths being reported since yesterday. You are listening to the evening news on All India Radio. A reminder of the headlines before we move on. Prime Minister Narendra Modi to launch nationwide COVID-19 vaccination program tomorrow through video conferencing. National COVID recovery rate improves to 96.53%. Ninth round of talks held between Centre and Pharma Unions in New Delhi. Next meeting on 19th of January. Third phase of Pradhan Mantri Kaushal Vikas Yojana launched in 600 districts across the country. India and Nepal discussed several areas of cooperation including connectivity, economy and security issues. And in cricket, Australia were 274 for 5 at stumps on day 1 of the final test match in Brisbane. For quick news updates on the clock, follow us on Twitter at AIR News Alerts. Hello.
ऑल इंडिया रेडियो प्रेजेंट्स वर्ल्ड न्यूज न्यूज एंड व्यूज फ्रॉम अक्रॉस द ग्लोब वॉट हैपन्ड एंड वॉट इज अप नेक्स्ट द न्यूज मेकर्स एंड द हाई लाइट ऑफ द डे फ्रॉम टेन थर्टी टू इलेवन पी एम एवरी नाइट ऑन हंड्रेड पॉइंट वन एफ एम ऑल इंडिया रेडियो The third phase of Pradhan Mantri Kaushal Vikas Yojana was launched today in 600 districts across the country. Spearheaded by the Ministry of Skill Development and Entrepreneurship, this phase will focus on new age and COVID-related skills. Skill Development Minister Dr. Mahendra Nath Pandey interacted with various students of the Skill Development Centers. Skill India Mission PMKVY 3.0 envisages training of 8 lakh candidates over a scheme period of 2020-2021. with an outlay of 949 crore rupees prime minister narendra modi launched skill india program in 2015 and it has gained tremendous momentum through launch of its flagship scheme pmkvy to unlock the vision of making india the skill capital of the world the two day prarambh startup india international summit began in new delhi today members of bimstech bay of bengal initiative for multi sectoral technical and economic cooperation countries are participating in the inaugural event the summit is being organized by departments for promotion of industry and internal trade declaring the summit open commerce and industry minister piyush goel said that it is a demonstration of the neighborhood first policy which will boost partnership among the member countries he hopes that this will usher in a new beginning showcasing various aspects of the startup world he said that indian startup ecosystem has made big progress in the last 5 years since the launch of startup india the minister said that the partnership among the binsep countries in the sector will take startups to the forefront of new india new world new neighborhood in the new normal prime minister narendra modi will also interact with the startups and address the summit through video conferencing tomorrow evening the summit is being organized as a follow up of the announcement made by the prime minister at the fourth bay of bengal initiative for multi sectoral technical and economic cooperation bimstec summit held in kathmandu in august 2018 where in india committed to host the bimstec startup conclave the summit marks the fifth anniversary of the startup india initiative launched by the prime minister on 16th january 2016 with participation from over 25 countries and more than 200 global speakers the summit will be the largest startup confluence organized by the government of india since the launch of the startup india initiative Prarambh is expected to bring together top policy makers, industry, academia, investors, startups and all stakeholders from across the globe. In addition to deliberating on good practices from the best of the ecosystems across the world, the sessions of the summit are designed to showcase the spread and depth of entrepreneurship based on innovation in India. The objective is to focus attention of the global capital for startups in India mobilize domestic capital provide opportunities for accessing international markets to our startups and evolve enabling policy provisions the first day of the summit has been devoted to host bimstec startup conclave ministers and senior officials from bangladesh bhutan myanmar nepal and sri lanka executive director of national innovation agency of thailand and the secretary general of bimstec will participate in the summit The ninth round of talks between the central government and farmer unions was held in the national capital today. Speaking to media after the talks, Agriculture Minister Narendra Singh Tomar said no conclusive decision was taken in the meeting and the next round of talks will be held on the 19th of January. Saying that the talks were held in a cordial atmosphere, Mr. Tomar hoped that a consensus will be arrived at soon. He added that the government suggested to farmer unions to form informal group to finalize concrete proposals that can be discussed further at formal talks he also expressed concern at the farmers protesting in the cold conditions mr tomar said all the three farm legislations were discussed in detail tino kanun jisme do naye ek sansodhit hai unke bare mein charcha hui aur avashyak vastu adhiniyam ke sansodhan par vistar se charcha hui charcha mein unhone apna mat vyakt kiya और हमारे मंत्री जी ने विस्तार से उस एक्ट को सभी यूनियन के साथ रखा और उनकी जो शंकाएं हैं उनको समाधान करने की कोशिश लेकिन चर्चा निर्णायक मोड़ पर नहीं पहुंच पाई और उसके बाद यूनियन और सरकार दोनों ने मिलकर ये तय किया कि 19 जनवरी को दोपहर 12 बजे पुनः चर्चा करेंगे मुझे आशा है कि 
जो चर्चा आज हुई है इंडियंस उस चर्चा को आगे बढ़ाने का प्रयत्न करेंगी हमने उनको ये भी कहा है कि वो चाहे तो अपने बीच में एक अनौपचारिक समूह बना लें जो लोग ठीक प्रकार से कानून पर बात कर सकते हैं इस पर डिस्कस करके वो कुछ मसौदा बना के अगर सरकार को दें तो सरकार उस पर खुले मन से विचार करने को तैयार है The minister added that the centre has identified the concerns of the farmers and is trying to allay these concerns. Replying to a query, the minister said, centre will present its side before the committee constituted by the Supreme Court when asked. The Supreme Court on Tuesday had stayed the implementation of the three farm laws till further orders. It had also announced the formation of a committee to hear the grievances of the farmers and the opinion of the government. Bharatiya Kisan Union President Bhupinder Singh Maan, Shedkari Sanghatan, Maharashtra President Anil Ghanwat, International Food Policy Research Institute's Pramod Kumar Joshi and Agriculture Economist Ashok Gulati were appointed on the panel. Yesterday, Mr. Maan recused himself from the four-member committee. The sixth meeting of the India-Nepal Joint Commission was co-chaired by External Affairs Minister Dr. S. Jay Shankar and Nepal Foreign Minister Pradeep Kumar Gyawali in New Delhi today. The Joint Commission comprehensively reviewed all aspects of multifaceted cooperation between the two countries and explored ways to further strengthen the traditionally close and friendly ties. Both sides discussed several areas of cooperation, including the areas of connectivity, economy and trade, power, oil and gas, water resources, political and security issues. External Affairs Ministry said the progress made since the last meeting of the Joint Commission in taking forward several bilateral initiatives was acknowledged. The close cooperation between the two sides in combating COVID-19 pandemic in the region was noted. Nepal congratulated India on the remarkable success in production of COVID shield and co-vaccine vaccines in India and requested for early provision of vaccines to Nepal. India and Japan signed a memorandum of understanding to enhance cooperation in the field of information and communication technologies today. The MOU was signed by Minister for Communications, Electronics and IT Ravi Shankar Prasad and the Japanese Minister for Internal Affairs and Communications Takeda Ryota. It was exchanged through a video conference today. The Department of Telecom and Japan's Ministry of Communications will enhance mutual cooperation in the field of 5G technologies, telecom security, submarine optical fiber cable system to islands of India, spectrum management, smart cities, high altitude platform for broadband in unconnected areas, disaster management and public safety, etc. Prime Minister Narendra Modi will flag off eight trains connecting different regions of the country to Kevaria on 17th January via video conferencing. These trains will facilitate seamless connectivity to the Statue of Unity. The Prime Minister will also inaugurate several other projects related to the railway sector in Gujarat during the event. Gujarat Chief Minister Vijay Rupani and Railways Minister Piyush Koyal will be present on the occasion. The 51st edition of the International Film Festival of India, IFE, will begin in Panaji, Goa tomorrow. The opening ceremony will be held in the presence of Information Minister for Information and Broadcasting, Prakash Javadekar. The festival will showcase the best of the movies from across the globe, during 16th January to 24th January 2021. For details, here is a desk report. Preparations are on in full swing for the International Film Festival of India in Panaji. The inauguration ceremony would be held at the Shama Prasad Stadium in Bambulim. This year, IFI is being organized in hybrid form, which includes physical as well as virtual screening of films, along with extensive use of OTT platform. Tributes would be paid to legendary filmmaker Satyajit Ray with the screening of his famous films like Charulata. Basu Chatterjee, Nishikant Kamat, Manmohan Mohapatra, Urdu poet Rahat Indori, choreographer Saroj Khan and singer S.P. Balasubramaniam. 
The movie gala will also showcase films of 19 artists from India and 9 international names who passed away last year. If we will pay homage to Irfan Khan, Sushant Singh Rajput, Rishi Kapoor and Hollywood star Chadwick Boseman and Somitra Chatterjee by screening their movies Bobby, Pan Singh Tomar, Kedarnath, Charulata and 42. From global cinema, films of actors including Kirk Douglas, Olivia de Havilland, directors Alan Parker, Ivan Passer, Goran Paskalyevich, cinematographer Alan Davio and composer Ennio Morricone will be screened. Twelve foreign films will be screened under the Kaleidoscope section. Every year, well-chosen films are included in this category. Three films from France have made it to the section, including Night of the Kings. Film enthusiasts will get an opportunity to watch Only Human by Igor Ivanov, The Audition by Ina Weiss, and many other films. Sand Kiyak, directed by Tushar Hiranandani and featuring Tapsi Pannu and Bhumi Pednekar, will open the Panorama section at the festival. A total of 224 films will be screened under different sections during this edition of IFI. This is Valsa Williams, AIR News. The Health Minister, Dr. Harsh Vardhan, today reviewed preparations for the launch of the nationwide COVID-19 vaccination drive scheduled to begin tomorrow. The Union Minister visited the dedicated COVID control room, which has been set up at the Nirban Bhavan premises of the Union Ministry of Health and Family Welfare. Prime Minister Narendra Modi will flag off the first phase of the Pan-India rollout of COVID-19 vaccination drive tomorrow at 10.30 a.m. via video conferencing. This vaccination program will cover the entire length and breadth of the country, with a total of 3,006 session sites across all states and union territories, which will be connected virtually throughout the exercise. Around 100 beneficiaries will be vaccinated tomorrow at each of the session sites. The vaccination drive has been planned in a phased manner, identifying priority groups. Healthcare workers, both in government and private sectors, including Integrated Child Development Services, ICDF workers, will receive the vaccine during this phase. Dr. Harshwadhan said, India's exercise to vaccinate its population against COVID-19 shall be the largest immunization drive of the world. The Union Minister reiterated that both the indigenously manufactured vaccines, Covishield and Covaxin, have proven safety and immunogenicity records and are the most important tools to contain the pandemic. In cricket, Australia were 274 for 5 at Stumps on the opening day of the fourth and final test at the Gabba in Brisbane today. Skipper Tim Paney on 38 and Cameron Green on 28 were at the crease. For the hosts, Labujagane stared with the bat scoring 108, while Matthew Wade and Steve Smith also made notable contributions. Earlier electing to bat, the host did not get off to a good start, as both the openers David Warner and Marcus Harris were out with just 17 runs on the scoreboard. For India, debutant South Paw Pacer T. Natarajan claimed two wickets, whereas Siraj, Shardul and Sundar scalped one each. Now let us take a look at the weather forecast for tomorrow. The national capital is likely to have dense fog in the morning. The minimum temperature will be 4 degrees Celsius and the maximum will be around 20 degrees. Mumbai will have a partly cloudy sky. The minimum temperature will be around 18 while the maximum is expected to be around 30. Srinagar will have a mainly clear sky. The temperature will hover between minus 7 and 6 degrees Celsius. Jammu will have fog in the morning and a mainly clear sky later. The minimum temperature will be around 7 degrees Celsius while the maximum will be around 16 degrees. Leh will have a partly clear sky. The minimum temperature will be around minus 13, while the maximum will be around 0 degree. Gilgit will have a mainly clear sky. The temperature will hover between minus 4 and 11 degrees Celsius. In Muzaffarabad, the sky will be mainly clear. The temperature will hover between 5 and 18 degrees Celsius. And now before we end the bulletin, the headlines once again. Prime Minister Narendra Modi to launch nationwide COVID-19 vaccination program tomorrow through video conferencing. National COVID recovery rate improves to 96.53%. Ninth round of talks held between Centre and Farmer Unions in New Delhi, next meeting on 19th January. Third phase of Pradhan Mantri Kaushal Vikas Yojana launched in 600 districts across the country. India and Nepal discussed several areas of cooperation including connectivity, economy and security issues. And in cricket, Australia were 274 for 5 at stumps on day 1 of final test match in Brisbane. And with that, we end the evening news. Good night.